Alright, uh, this video is going to finish off chapter 21 in text questions, so that'll be questions uh, 10 through to 14, as the previous video. Uh, ooh, that's weird. System of group cause Ah, sorry, no, that will be 11 through to 14. I did 10 on the last video. Okay. Let's have a look at question 11. Uh, question 11 reads, what is the electric field strength 0.2 meters from a point charge of minus 6 coulomb, microcoulombs in both magnitude and direction? So, uh, let's start off with our variables. We have here a distance of 0.2 meters. We have a point charge Q equals minus 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Remember, micro is 10 to the negative 6. And we're looking for an electric field. So we want to find uh, something that involves a distance from a charge. Uh, we want to find uh, something that involves the charge itself. Uh, and we want to find E. Uh, now, as I recollect, the correct form that we should be using here, and I will just scroll up to confirm as I don't have my notes in front of me, sorry, is that the electric field should equal Kc uh, times Q over D squared. Uh, let's see, electric fields formula. Text might not actually have these formulas. Uh, I know E equals F over Q. Now the problem is my zoom stops me from seeing it. Uh, yeah, so E, there we go. So it looked like a minus and minus equals KC, Coulomb's constant, Q over D squared. Uh, now looking at the textbook, do be aware that they're just using K. Um, you'll find that in physics. Whenever there's a constant, uh, they tend to just throw a K in for constant. Uh, remember, C is the speed of light. I always like to give my K subscripts to say what sort of constant it is, uh, just to help with communication. Now, that's the way I'll represent it on exams, uh, and it's certainly the way that you should help give notes to yourself. But just do be aware of that because um, a lot of the, there, there's a standing joke in physics that uh, when someone says K, well, what value of K are we talking about? Because there's like 20 different Ks that you could think of uh, as you go through some of your studies over the next couple of years. So just be aware of that. Um, but if we look here, we see, okay, we've got our Q. I've used capital Q here because we're representing just one charge. But uh, in this case, it's the same sort of thing. Uh, D, 0.2 squared. So let's chuck that in. So E will equal 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times negative 6 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 0 0.2 squared. Uh, let's simplify this top line up a bit. We've got a 10 to the 10 to the 9 and 10 to the negative 6. Uh, so that's going to give us 10 to the 3. Uh, we've got 8.99 times negative 6, so that's going to be a negative number. And 8.99 times 6, or well, let's say 8.99 is pretty much 9. 9 times 6 will equal 54. Uh, so again, if we... Uh, where's my calculator? Not here. If we open up all from alpha and chuck that into it. 8.99 times 6 will give us, should be around close to 54, 53.94, which, so 53.94 times 10 to the 3, and 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 squared, 0 0.2 times 0.2, or 0 0.2 squared, 0 0.2 to the power of 2 should be uh, somewhere around 0 0.04. 0.04, or uh, well if we write that a different way, 4 times 10 to the negative 2. I like doing that because it does allow us to, um, just put the keyboard out of the way there, uh, allow us to do some cancelling here. So again, uh, this is the same thing as 54. 5.4 uh, times 10 to the 4, uh, but let's just cancel that off. Dividing by negative, that's going to increase the power. So we're going to have negative 53.94 over 4 times 10 to the 5. 
uh, we can take out a power of 10 out of that, so that would equal negative 5.394 over 4 times 10 to the 6. You can see, well, 5 divided by 4 is just going to be a bit over 1, uh, so... So 5.394 divided by 4 gives me 1.3485, so let's round that off, equals negative 1.35 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, don't forget our units, uh, and it is a negative, which if we double check against our answers we find that they have 1.35 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Now, the second part of this question though is, well, what direction is that? And the negative does give us a clue. So it's asking about electric field strength. So remember, in an electric field, if I draw a quick electric field here, we have a negative charge. Fields flow into negative charges. Okay, we always draw it as flowing into a negative. So remember, our test charge is positive. We haven't been told what sort of charge we're putting into this. Question 11 doesn't say anything about what sort of charge we're putting around it, so we have to assume it's a test charge. Being as it's positive, is a positive going to be pulled towards the negative or pushed away from the negative? Remember, opposite, type, opposite signs attract, so the direction would be inwards, not left or right or up or down or, um, or into the page or out of the page, but inwards towards the charge. Okay, so you've got to be careful or got to be clear with the sort of language we use for directions. We don't have any sort of setup of different charges to say, oh yeah, it's flowing to the right or it's flowing up or down. Um, you sort of need to figure those bits out. Okay, let's have a look at 12. Uh, a metal sphere of radius 35 centimetres. Let's draw that. And whenever you're doing a question, I'm just going to turn that to metres straight away. When you're ever doing a question, you get a sort of small description, draw it down straight away. Don't even read the next bit of it. I've read here, I've got a metal sphere, that's a circle, radius 35 centimetres. Bang, let's put that in. Don't even bother about waiting for it. Uh, carries a charge over its surface of 16 microcoulombs. Okay, let's put that in. Q equals 16 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Okay, convert to metric as you're doing it. Or to convert to SI, sorry, as you're doing that. What is the potential at its surface? Now, the symbol for potential is a V. Now, I've written here R equals a radius. Do be aware, though, that um, not all formulas would use R for radius. You might get S for displacement. You might get D for distance. Um, the formulas in the textbooks, the formulas that I give you in class, uh, they, they can be a little bit different. But the thing is, we're all talking about the same thing here. We're talking about a straight line from the centre to the edge. Now, when we have a metal sphere like this, we can consider it to be a point charge. And so the potential is, well, what would it be to bring it to that distance away from the centre? Because if I'm bringing something from all the way out here, all the way in, I'm bringing it near this charge here, and 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 all the charge spread around. The good thing is, is that this stuff over here would be closer, this stuff over here would be further away, but if we average it out, it's as if it was in the middle. So, we can just treat it as if it's all right in the middle, we're bringing it from infinity all the way in. Alright, so, if we have a think through our formulas here, we know that voltage, okay, and we've got a distance, and we've got a Q. And if you look back up a little bit further, you'll find that voltage uh, is equal to Q over D, or KQ over D. So voltage equals KC. And we've only got the 1K at the moment, so it's always going to be cool and constant. Q divided by D. Now, R, we used R for radius, but it's still just a distance. Okay, It's a distance away from, a, from where the center, where the focus is. So that's going to equal 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times 16 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 0 0.35 squared. And if we start working with the question, we have 8.99 times 16. Uh, 10 to the 9, 10 to the negative 6, so it's going to be 10 to the power of 3. 0 0.35 squared. gives me an answer of 
0.1225 okay or uh, let's write that with 1.225 times 10 to the negative 1 the reason I do that is because it allows me to use some of these um, powers that cancel things off uh, makes it a little bit easier to see uh, 8.99 times 16 uh, well, that's going to be 9 times 16. 9 times 16 would be 90 plus 54, so uh, what's that, 144? Could have factorised out a power of 10, but uh, that's okay. So 143.84 equals 143.84 times, let's see, 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the negative 1 is going to give me a 10 to the 4. We're going to divide that by 1.225. Uh, we could reduce that down. I'm just trying to show you guys math tricks here to help speed up your processing. So, I mean, I could have just chucked all this in the calculator at the start, but the more you work with numbers, the faster you'll get, and the easier you'll see um, what a solution should be near before you actually get into um, working with it. So this would be 1.44 times 10 to the 6 divided by 1.225. If we look at this, we can see, well, that's going to go into that once and a little bit more. So now we just need to divide those two numbers. <laughs> and we get an answer of about 1.17 equals 1.17 times 10 to the 6 uh, volts, and that was in volts. Let's go to our answer key, double check that. Uh, what was this? This was question 12, 4.1 times 10 to the 5 volts. Hmm, so I've done something wrong there. Let's go back and double check my math because something has slipped up. So I'm going to enter the whole thing to begin with and see what happened. Oh, I see what happened. I'm a bit of a twit. I do apologize. Here's its D, and I've gone and squared it by accident. Uh, do be careful with stuff like that. I know a lot of our formulas have distance squared, but because I did that, I just stuffed up that bottom line entirely. So that should be 3.5 times 10 to the negative 1, which will still let us do that. So that should be 3.5. 3.5. Now... This should be better. So if we look at that divided by that, uh, that would, this is a little bit more than twice that. So it'd be a little bit under 5.0 times 10 to the 6. Uh, so around something the 4, 4.5-ish or so. Let's divide that. And if you did catch me doing that earlier, doing that wrong, uh, good job there. That equals 0 0.411 times 10 to the 6, or 4.1 times 10 to the 5, which is the answer in the back of the textbook, I believe. Uh, double check that, question 12, yes, 4.1 times 10 to the 5 volts. Okay, so remember, uh, no one's infallible, do double check your answers, uh, and try to reflect and find where you've gone wrong if needs be. Uh, I'm not perfect, I do make mistakes, but we check to make sure. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Two points in space are at electric potentials of 18 volts and negative 6 volts respectively. Calculate the potential difference between those two points and the work in moving a 5.5 microcoulomb charge from one point to the other. So we have two points, let's label these two points, we'll call one A, call one B, the voltage here equals 18 volts, the voltage here equals minus 6 volts. So the first thing it's asking for us is, well, what's the potential difference? Remember, the potential difference is just voltage. So what's the difference in voltage between this number and this number? Uh, and we can see it's a fairly trivial thing that the potential difference, remember, delta means difference, equals 18, take away negative 6. Whenever you have a difference, subtract one from the other, gives us 24 volts. That was pretty straightforward. Uh, B is a slightly more complicated one. Uh, we have a charge. So I have uh, Q equals 
5.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And we're going to move it from here over to there. Uh, so we have a... Hmm. Oh, we want work. So uh, we want to find out work. Work, 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 work. Work equals dunno. So do we have something that we have voltage? We have work, we have Q, uh, and one of the last equations that we saw today that work equals uh, Q times V. So work equals Q times V equals 5.5 times 10 to the negative 6, and it does 24 volts of work. Whenever you've got a two-part question like this, it's common that whatever you work out for part A is going to be used for part B. Uh, I would generally write these sort of questions as show that the potential difference is 24 volts. It gives you kind of a clue, but doesn't stuff you up for doing part B in case you can see that. Uh, that being said, you know, that A thing, that, that's not a C standard question, that's like an A, that's like a, sorry, a D or an E standard question. It's, it's far too easy. Uh, so let's have a look at that. 5.5 times 10 to the 6 times 24. Uh, we can just check that straight in the calculator. We don't need to do anything too important. 5.5 uh, Which should give us... Uh, 0 0.000132, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places, 1.32 times 10 to the 4, uh, negative 4, sorry, joules. Remember, it is work, the symbol for work is, or the unit for work is joules. Uh, and we see that, yeah, those are both correct, though they've rounded off to one decimal place. Uh, final one for this video, let's have a look at 14. Two metal plates are placed vertically, 30 millimeters apart. Okay, so let's do that. Vertically. Okay, you might go, well, why don't you draw it the other way? Uh, the actual clues in the next bit of the sentence, the top plate is positive. So say we're going to have a top and a bottom, not vertically lined up. Okay, um, sometimes the language for these sort of things sucks, but if we... Uh, Go back and have a look through. Nothing else about gravity or anything. They are 30 millimeters apart, so the distance is 30 times 10 to the negative 3 meters, or 3 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, meters. Potential difference of 300 volts. So top is positive is negative and the voltage equals 300 volts. Calculate the electric field between the plates. So we have a potential difference, we have a distance, uh, we can work out the electric field from that. Uh, so I believe our formula for this was that the electric field equals voltage over distance or that voltage equals um, electric field times distance. So, first question or part of A, sorry, not this, is what is the electric field? We know that electric field equals voltage over distance from our formulas, equals 300 over 3 times 10 to the negative 2. Uh, so, it's going to give us 2 zero. So, that should equal 10,000 or 1 times 10 to the 5. Uh, sorry, 10 to the 4. I can't do math. 1 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. Uh, let's have a look at B. If a negative charge of 6 microcoulombs is placed in the field at a point 10 millimetres above the earth plate, what force acts on? Now, the earth plate in this case, they can't, they're talking about this one at the bottom. Okay, um, we're not worrying about earthing or terminology like that. But we're saying 10 millimetres above the earth plate, so it's going to be inside. Because if it's 10 millimetres above this, nothing would happen. We wouldn't be able to calculate that. We do have the electric field, though, and we could figure out what it is uh, there. Now, when we say electric field, remember the electric field is constant. However, um, 
the what's we're looking for the equipotential the voltage and we'll be doing an experiment on that is not the same everywhere and we'll learn about that um, in the coming weeks in class so we have e we know that the distance here is uh, 10 millimeters which is 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters and we know that Q equals negative 6 uh, positive 6 6 microcoulombs let's replace that 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs and it is positive oh sorry it says negative if a negative charge I didn't see the word there uh, so if we think about that um, if I've got a charge here what's going to happen to it Okay, it's going to be pushed towards the positive charge here. It's going to be pushed away from the negative. Even though the field lines are going this way, uh, remember field lines show a direction of positive. It's negative, so it's going to go the opposite way. Uh, we want to know what is the force. Now, we know that the electric field is the same everywhere. We know the size of the charge, and we need to figure out force. And remember, we defined electric field as force over charge. Okay. So that means then force must equal electric field multiplied by the charge inside of it. So a one kilo in E, sorry. Uh, let's replace those numbers. We have 1 times 10 to the 4 multiplied by negative 6 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, let's see, 4 times negative 6, that's going to equal 10 to the negative 2. Uh, 1 times 6 is negative 6, so negative 6 times 10 to the negative 2. The negative in this case meaning that it's being pushed upwards uh, and because it's going against the field lines. And negative 2, well, that's just a small number. Okay, and if we double check our answers on that one, which goes up to, up to question 14, aren't we? Uh, 6 times 10 to the negative 2 upwards. Uh, so don't forget our units, newtons, and we want to put a direction now. We know it's going upwards, but because I haven't communicated to you, I don't get those points for the vectors. Always, because remember, force is a vector. We need that direction, so you really want to get into the habit of identifying those where you can. Upwards. And the reason we say upwards is because we just define this as being the top plate. Um, if it hadn't, I would really heavily recommend you draw a picture to say how you uh, have interpreted this because if you were going to say the positive is on the negative, we'd say it was ten, six times ten to the negative two downwards. Um, because the question specifically says the top plate is positive, it has to look like this. But if those five words hadn't been there, you could have drawn this however you wanted. You could have done left or right. You could have gone swapped around and had down and up. Okay, it's up to you. It's just a matter of communicating to the person that they're in, me generally, about what you're actually seeing here. Okay, uh, calculate the energy gained by the charge as it is moved up to the positive plate. Now in the previous question we got told that it is 10 millimeters, one centimeter away from the bottom plate. And we didn't use that number, but we need that number now. So if it's 10 centimeters away, and the whole, sorry, one centimeter away, and the whole thing is three centimeters, well if it moves to the positive plate, that distance from there, there is going to be two times 10 to the negative 2 meters, it's going to be 2 centimeters. So we know that S or D, depending on what formula we end up using, is 2 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. The whole thing was 3 centimeters apart, it started 1 centimeter into it, it's moved up to the positive plate. Uh, okay, so we've got S, um, let's work out, we want to find energy, work, uh, and if I think back to our notes, we had that work equals QES. So let's see, we've got S, we've got Q, and we know E. Okay. Sometimes it can help just go, well, I want work. What's a formula that lets me solve for work? Do I have those things? Could I find those things out? Could I assume some of those things? In this case, we do have them, but they're spread over a couple of questions. So that's going to equal negative 6 times 10 to the negative 6, yep, multiplied by 1 times 10 uh, to the negative 4. And we see, oh, look, there's our force thing. Remember, work equals force times distance. Uh, negative 2, and the distance was 2 times 10 to the negative 2. 
I might have put negative 2 there, that should be positive 4. So, uh, let's work out the powers first. Negative 6 times 4, that's going to give us negative 2. Negative 2 is negative 2 is going to be 10 to the negative 4. Uh, negative 6 times 1 is 1, times 2 is going to be t negative 12, which would equal negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 joules, uh, which if we take a look at our answer, we find that it is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 joules. Now, this negative out here, front here, this is the question. The answer was given as negative because energy is scalar, it doesn't have a sign. Okay? And your answer should be that it is just 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3. Even though we had a charge here, we don't need it. And the reason for this is because energy is just a scalar quantity. But it, the negative does tell us was the energy um, done by the field or was the energy given to the field. So, for example, with gravity, if we have something that's fallen, then we would say that well, something falling is taking energy out of the field. Okay, It's gaining energy as it moves with the field. If I lift something up, I'm putting energy into the field. I'm working against the field. So did this go with the field or against the field? Okay. Well, in this case, it, didn't, it was a negative item, and so um, it got flipped the other way, but it did what? The field pushes away positive things and attracts negative things. So the field did the work. The field gave away some of its energy to the particle. And that's what that negative there means. Now, the easy way to think about it is that, well, if you see a negative in front of an energy and, you, and you're fine with your calculations, just ignore the negative. That's the first thing to do. And that's what we've done there. But I'm going to just sort of stipulate this is this is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 joules to the particle. If we had instead said, okay, well, we started 10 millimeters away from uh, the positive plate and we moved it to the negative plate, so we've got the same numbers here in terms of charge and field and distance, well, we would have to say, well, what is it that we've actually done? We've, we've pushed energy into the field. Right? And so you do be careful with these negatives here. We just let the field do the work. If we did the, against the field, we would have a negative displacement and then we'd end up with a positive number, which would mean that we've put energy into the field. Okay, now that's a really hard concept to start wrapping your head around and hopefully it'll make sense over time, but uh, it's a good first introduction. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of this video as uh, the next set of questions are the one-star questions at the end and I'll address those in another video. Thanks for listening guys, uh, study hard.